Every spring and summer, I have to drag out my old mower so I can start the mowing season, but the self-propel on it stopped working years ago, so I want to buy a new used mower, and of course, I want one with a good self-propel, but now I have to choose which drivetrain I want to get, but which one works better? Front-wheel drive, rear-wheel drive, or is it worth paying the extra money for the coveted all-wheel drive? Before I choose one, I want to see which one of these mowers performs the best. In today's video, we're going to test how much pulling power each one of these mowers has, testing out which drivetrain works the best because, let's face it, the better it pulls, the easier it is for you to mow. We'll also consider the health of the engine because if the engine is worn out, it's going to have less power to give to the drive wheels. We'll also take stock of the condition of the tires because, as you'll see later on, traction is a major issue. So first off, the all-wheel drive mower is of course from Husqvarna, and this one is being powered by a Kohler engine. It also has some of the most aggressive tread I've ever seen, which means it should get the best traction per tire. Now the Honda belongs to a family member, and it's been around for a very long time. It's of course rear-wheel drive, but unfortunately the tires are completely bald, so I don't think it's going to do all that well in our testing. Now, the front-wheel drive Husqvarna is also powered by a Honda engine, but it appears to be in much better condition than the other Honda engine. The tires have about 20% tread left on them, so it should have a fair amount of traction, even considering it doesn't have a lot of weight on them. Now, the Toro is also front-wheel drive, but the difference is going to be weight, as it weighs a lot more, thanks in part to the Tecumseh engine that's powering it. There's also a bit more tread on these tires, so I think it's going to perform better than the Husqvarna. The last mower we're going to be testing is a PowerSmart mower, representing the affordable line of mowers that have shown up in the marketplace recently. And even though we already have a rear-wheel drive mower, this one has extremely large wheels. That means we should get a different result. Now the tires are not worn out. This is just how they look, but I don't think they're going to offer any real traction. I will say this, I have my own guesses as to which mower is going to pull the most and which one is going to pull the least, but I was very surprised how it really turned out. Now before watching this video, just take a guess as to which one is going to perform the best and which one is going to be at the bottom of the list. Now there is a lot to cover in this video, so I'm not going to show you every single step to save time. The first mower up is the rear-wheel drive Honda, and we'll want to check the health of the engine by using a compression tester. The tester will measure how much pressure your engine can make on the compression stroke. We want to see a reading as close to 150 psi as possible, so any reading below that means the engine does have some wear to it. We do not want to see a reading below 50 psi. I'm also going to use a drill to turn the engine over to override the compression release and get a true reading. Now if you need one of these, there should be a link in the description. So the reading is about 77 psi, and unfortunately, if I had to rate the health of this engine, it would have to be poor. Now, it's enough to allow the engine to start repeatedly, but it's going to be down on power. Combine that with the bald tires, and I don't think it's going to turn out well for the Honda. My guess for second place might be more wishful thinking than anything else. Next up is the rear-wheel drive power smart mower. So the reading is pretty decent at 121 PSI, and if I had to rate the health of this engine, I would have to say good. Hopefully with this reading, the PowerSmart will have a good showing. The only problem is going to be traction because the design of the tread is going to hurt its performance. The next mower up is the Honda-powered front-wheel drive Husqvarna. So the reading is 160 PSI, which is fantastic, and if I had to rate the health of this engine, I'd have to say it was excellent. That means the front wheels will have more than enough power, so hopefully it's going to do very well during the test. The next mower is going to be the front-wheel drive Toro with a Tecumseh engine. Now normally I would take off the metal engine cover, but I forgot the recoil assembly is separate, so I took a shortcut and only took the recoil off instead of the whole cover. So the reading is 130 PSI, which isn't bad. If I had to rate the health of this engine, I would say it's good. Now with the good tire tread it has, it should do very well, even with it only being front-wheel drive. And last but not least, it's now time for the one I think it's going to win this whole competition, the Kohler-powered Husqvarna with all-wheel drive. This mower is a personal favorite of mine. However, every single one that I've ever owned, I've sold or given away, and the reason is I simply don't like the way it mulches the grass. Mm -hmm. 
So the reading is an incredible 175 PSI, which is quite unbelievable. I don't think I've ever seen a reading quite this high on a lawnmower before. If you hadn't guessed the health rating, it's obviously going to be an excellent. Next, I'm going to show you what I got to measure the pulling power of each of the mowers. Now, I bought this gauge online and it was not very expensive, which of course means it's probably not going to last very long either, which is fine. I just need it to last a few tests. I know that sounds wasteful, but you get what you pay for. Now, it's able to measure pulling and also pushing forces in four different units, and I'm choosing to use kilograms. There's also a peak feature that I'm going to use to record the max value. Now, I don't plan on holding it. Instead, I plan on putting it in a fixture, and the fixture will also be connected to a large item, and in this case, it's going to be a heavy wheel and tire. The fixture allows the gauge to move inside it, and the fixture will also be able to pivot depending upon which way the mower decides to pull it. For each mower, I'm going to tie the brake handle down and start the engine, then activate the self-propel. I'll then allow the mower to take out the slack, and then we'll start recording the peak numbers. So the max reading for the rear wheel drive power smart mower was 4.82 kilograms and to be honest i don't know if that's a good number but it's a good starting point also the test went very well just like i thought it would unfortunately they're not all going to go so well the next mower to be tested is the toro with the front wheel drive So the max reading for the front wheel drive Toro was 6.75 kilograms, which is really surprising considering how much the front tires were spinning in the dirt, but more than likely the weight of the mower is helping out with traction. With that reading, it puts the Toro in the lead. The next mower we're going to test is the Honda powered Husqvarna, also with front wheel drive. Just for fun, I'm going to turn the fuel valve on for several seconds to fill the bowl with fuel and then shut it off, just to prove the valve has nothing to do with the mower's ability to start. So the max reading for the front wheel drive Honda powered Husqvarna was a very weak 3.46 kilograms. That's an extremely poor showing for such a powerful engine, but then again, traction was the issue here. The next mower up is its opposite, the rear wheel drive and very worn out Honda.
so I had to stop the testing very abruptly because the wheels were barely spinning. There was simply too much traction with the bald tires and the hard dry ground, and because of the excellent traction, the gauge reported a max reading of 14.2 kilograms, which is extremely high and maybe too high because it was basically in crawl mode. I'm going to do the test again, but this time in a spot with more grass so the tires can spin just like the other tests. So this time with the wheels on grass, the tires weren't getting as much traction as they did on the dirt. Less traction allowed some wheel spin, just like in the other tests. The other reason I stopped the test from earlier was because of belt slip. If the wheels aren't spinning, that means the belt is, and I didn't want to damage it. This time we got a reading of 10.68 kilograms, which I think is a lot more accurate. But since we did record a much higher reading, I'm going to show that we had two readings, one high and one low. I always thought that bald tires on a Honda mower meant it was going to have bad traction, but it turns out to be the other way around. The only time that this is not going to help is when the grass is wet. If that does happen, I guess I'm going to have to push harder to help out with the loss of traction. That brings us to the final mower, which of course is the all-wheel drive Husqvarna. I do apologize that I don't have more footage of the mower pulling against the rig, but because of traction, the tires weren't spinning, which meant the belt was slipping somewhere along the three pulleys and three tensioners inside it, so to keep from damaging a major component, I stopped the test sooner than later. However, because of the all-wheel drive and there being too much traction, the gauge was able to record a reading of 15.79 kilograms, which is extremely high. I thought I saw the gauge read over 16, but it didn't record it since the peak wasn't turned on at the time. As predicted, the all-wheel drive did the best, but what was most surprising was the rear-wheel drive doing better than expected, especially with bald tires. So how do all the mowers rank according to pulling power? It's sad to say, but the front-wheel drive Husqvarna placed last with a reading of only 3.46 kilograms, while the Power Smart with its larger rear wheels managed a reading of only 4.82 kilograms, and the front-wheel drive Toro was only able to pull 6.75 kilograms for third place. The Honda got second place, which was my guess because of the rear wheel drive, but it performed much better than expected with two readings, one being 10.68 kilograms and a higher reading of 14.2 kilograms, which was almost as high as the more complex system you get from the all-wheel drive Husqvarna, but it still ended up winning with a max reading of 15.79 kilograms. So it's no surprise the all-wheel drive mower won this test, but then again, I'm sure most would agree they are very complex and very expensive to fix. If you need all that traction, you're going to pay a hefty price for it. However, this test did give us a lot of important information. It also showed how well or poor the other types of drivetrain performed. Front-wheel drives seem to be hit or miss, while the rear-wheel drives seem to be better overall. Just for comparison, say you have a standard push mower that costs X amount, and to get the front-wheel drive version of it, it's going to cost more money, about 15% more money. But what if you want the rear-wheel drive version? Well, that's going to cost 30% more. That brings us to the all-wheel drive version, and if you want that one, you're going to need to bring some crypto because it's going to be about 44% more. So if you want a good self-propel mower, I would recommend any rear-wheel drive mower, but if you want to be pulled around by your mower, consider getting an all-wheel drive mower and a hoverboard and let it do all the work for you. Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate your time here. Please feel free to ask me any questions about this project or your own projects. 
and I hope to see you in the next video.